Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we're looking at upgrading the Caspa KS0 Pro from the 280 Giga Hash, which you can see we're doing about 300 Giga Hash with just proper airflow. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. 2 to 340 Giga Hash, but we're using the Ice River Monitor software provided by T Swift and Company. And before we continue, a huge shout out to Coin Mining Central who helped us get our hands on the KS0 Pro. But if you're looking for Casper mining equipment, they got you covered, ranging from the Zero Pro all the way to the KS3, 3M, L, 2s, and 1s. Some of the older generation models have been phased out, so you're only going to be able to get those from the secondhand market. But if you're looking for ASIC mining equipment or just crypto mining equipment in general, check out the new arrivals. They got everything from Bitmain, Ice River, What's Miner, so on and so forth. They'll be linked down in the description, and let's get right back into the video. Uh, all you got to do is double click this guy, in top left. You put in the IP address of the machine, choose which machine it is, because they range from KS0s to KS3, Ls, and M, uh, which have multiple boards, whereas the Zeros and the Pros only have one. And we can see the thermals of each each particular, uh, I guess you could say, chip, maybe? I'm not sure. There, it says 12 here. We counted uh, a total of, well, 12 chips, so it's each chip. So there were six on the top and six in the bottom. When, if you haven't seen the teardown video, you could also check that out. And we could see in the web UI, it only gives us two temperatures. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's not much information. We can see the fan speeds. Uh, and you can see the max and min, so on and so forth. But the only temperatures we see is board in and board out. And that doesn't really give us a lot, right? Because you can see board out says 59. Whereas here, we can see the chips are ranging anywhere between 48 to 44. And it's actually a chilly day here in Florida. So now, in order to update the firmware on this particular guy, I have to extract uh, the one provided to me because it is locked per MAC address. Click on this guy, and then I just need to update to this one. And they say, according to README, there's a few steps first that we need to do. So we need to go log into the machine's IP, which we're going to do right now. All right, so first things first, we need to click on restore factory settings. So we're going to do that right now. But of course, make a note of the pool and mining, uh, the pool and the wallet address before you do this, because it is going to restore defaults and you're going to be mining to somebody else's address. So just make a note of that and then click on restore factory settings. When you do, it's going to say, do you want to confirm factory reset? You hit OK. It's going to do its thing. And then the next step is we need to load the INT, the init file, INIT file, uh, which of course is step number two in the README. And then the miner is going to restart. So there's going to be multiple restarts. So operation succeed. Okay, boom, there we go. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. There we go. You can see it's now back to default. It's on EU instead of US, and it's mining to somebody else's address. So now let's go to upgrade select file we need to navigate to where i put it and here it is i n i t k s pro underscore update so open and then click update we're gonna have to wait again it's gonna say operation succeed okay and then the miner is gonna restart be patient as the miner restarts and then we can move on to step three there we go confirm restarting of the machine okay give it a little bit more time because we gotta wait for the miner to come back online now. You see if we go to the home page, it's just blank. So just give it a little extra time. And for step three, all we gotta do is upload the firmware uh, with our desired overclock. In this case, we want the 340G underscore L underscore KS Pro underscore update. According to the readme, we uh, basically wanna start with 340GL and then the one without the L and then the one uh, below that like the 320 with the L and then the one without it so on and so forth kind of stepping it down finding your range making sure that you're aware of your thermals and environmental conditions and just aware that maybe T Swift and company can hit higher clocks than you can um, so now we should be able to refresh machine still coming back online let's give it some time we got to log back in nope there it is all right, so it's back online. We haven't adjusted the pool or the wallet address yet, but now you can see there's no T Swift picture here on the left, so that means we're back to factory. Firmware upgrade, select file, and now we're gonna apply this bad boy right here and update. 
same thing it's going to need to restart be patient as it restarts and you're going to want to let it settle but at the same time we're going to use the ice river monitoring software to keep an eye on things and so we just grabbed a, a quick screen grab of the original it disconnected because the miner is restarting obviously but I just want to grab that to see what the thermals are and compare them after this upgrade gets done and everything gets settled. So there we go. Okay. Needs to confirm restart. Okay. Okay. Again, now we're waiting for the miner to come back online. And most importantly, what are we doing? That's right, class. We are making sure that our wallet address and uh, mining pool are updated. So we don't mind if somebody else. All right, now we go back to mining settings, update the pool and username, and then just sit back and watch it as it connects and keep an eye on the hash rate and the thermals. All right, so we're back online, but before we continue, I just want to make sure you guys are crystal clear in case this is the first video of my channel you watch. I've done videos on modding this and options to cooling and thermals and all kinds of stuff, but T-Swift is not liable. T-Swift and company are not liable. Use this firmware at your own risk. Be smart about it. You should have already modded it so that way you have uh, additional power from an increased power supply. Uh, you have the uh, heat sinks on the MOSFETs to add additional cooling. You modified it and added external uh, fans as well. Uh, if you're trying to run this uh, high hash rate firmware from T-Swift and company without uh, doing your research first, you're doing it wrong. So please know they're not liable. Use at your own risk. And just be careful. So we definitely want to spin up the monitoring software and make sure that we're keeping an eye on thermals. We don't want to just let it sit for 30 minutes and not keep an eye on it. We definitely need to keep an eye on these chips. If you're getting into yellow, uh-oh. If you're in red, shut that bad boy down and go down to the next level, whatever uh, you're on. You know, if I'm on 340 and it's getting too hot, I need to go down to 320. If it's still too hot, go down to the next one. Maybe 300 is just where I need to sit. And I put it back on the 280 giga hash and just keep the airflow on it. All so, right. And so now after some time, we're getting around that 10 minute range right now. And you can see we're doing about 338 giga hash. Uh, the 30 minute mark is only saying 55 giga hash. We got to let it roll. I did have some issues off rip um, because it was overheating. Now the chips themselves, you could see on this picture, the, the highest chip is on like 55, maybe 53 degrees Celsius. But the biggest issue is the MOSFETs, right? We're pushing a higher overclock. And with these higher overclocks, we're going to heat up the chips. And when you start stepping like towards the, the lesser ones, like this is the 320 giga hash I'm trying right now. It's at 875, right? As far as the clock. But we're still hitting that 340 because we got sufficient cooling. If I were to push a 340, I could probably get up to 360. But because I'm hitting that the thermal threshold of the MOSFET, so I, need, I needed to do some more optimization on my particular configuration, maybe ducked in the side fan to force it through the center of the, uh, the KS0 Pro. But this is what it's all about, right? Knowing that, you know, this is a risk uh, and, and we are, uh, T-Swift is not liable, we are liable. If anything happens to our machines, just monitor it, right? Don't set it and forget it. Keep an eye on the thermals. Bear in mind, we can't monitor the MOSFET temperatures. And if you see this outboard temperature or this board temp out getting really, really hot, your MOSFETs are cooking, guys. Plain and simple. Uh, the board temp on the inside or coming in was not that hot. And if you see it down around this right here, right? Like if you're in and you're out temperature are the same, that means it rolled over. It hit a certain thermal threshold. The MOSFETs are like, yo, bro, I can't handle this. And it just shut down. And it's not running at the hash rate advertised. So it's all going to be about airflow and cooling. But it is possible. Uh, we do plan on doing something in the future. Uh, a different video. Maybe uh, attaching a, a K-type thermocouple to a MOSFET. Or near or as close as I can to a MOSFET. Just to see what those thermals are. So we can keep an eye on it. And monitor that's really going to be what determines whether or not you can run these high hash rate clocks from t swift and company but that's going to do it for today's video thank you so much for stopping by do me a favor on the way out hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here um and just note one thing my clocks here are only 875 whereas the 340 giga hash one is 925 so i'm actually running the 320 l um, and I'm still getting at 338. And that's just because of optimized airflow and cooling. All right. Take care.